What's up? I'm Doc. I'm one of the sample kings. The video you've purchased is about the ASRX Pro. Really cool machine. Just got one recently. That's why we did the video. It's kind of cool. It samples. It's got its own keyboard sounds. It's got drum sounds in it. It's got everything in it, even bass sounds. I'm going for you to make up a nice sort of hip-hop sampled up track. You know what I mean? Like you hear on the radio today. It also samples. You can sample and resample the sample, which means you can take like a 16-bit sample and go down to 8-bit and sort of grind it up somewhat. Give it that kind of like really true hip-hop sound. Well, look, I can talk all day. It's time to get busy. Get your machine out and your instructional manual, and let's do this. Time to get to know the back, where to plug the cables in, where the output is at, how to plug that scuzzy cable up, we're going to take in data. Let's do that. Okay, now this is the back of our ASRX Pro. Now here, of course, we've got our on and off switch. Before we can do that, you got to make sure you have the proper power, which is 120. Proper cable, put it right in there like that. Now here I have a SCSI port. I use my SCSI cable. So you can see it properly. There it is, right there. We use a SCSI to go to a device like maybe a zip drive or a jazz drive, or even a CD, so we can load data into our ASRX Pro. Now here I have these little. I can put these two things in. And I can pull it out. Now, I'm going to show you some MIDI cable connections. It's our MIDI cable. Take our MIDI cable, put our cable in like that. We can also get a MIDI out. We can send MIDI out to another receiving device that receives MIDI. And send MIDI information out of our ASRX Pro. Sometimes you may want to use a foot switch, which can help you to even sustain sounds or to help you to even trigger sounds. A foot switch right here, let me turn it the right way. I'm going to tap this foot switch. I'll plug it in right here. Just like that. Okay, right the way. And here, I trigger my foot switch. You can also use audio input cables for our audio input section. Here it says audio input. I can plug right and a left cable in to send stereo input to sample in to our ASRX Pro. We can control our input level. Let's turn that dial up that way or turn it this way. See that? Now sometimes, unplug this, unplug these out. We need to use a microphone. See the microphone? There's a little mic right there. We'll take our mic cable, plug our mic cable into the left, and turn our switch up for mic. See the mic signal right there. Where's your microphone? Next, I want to hook up my main out. I want to send the output, the audio output, to my speaker system or to my mixer. Well, we've got mono left and mono right. Put this one here. Put this one put it right in here. Also, you may want to use a headset. We've got our headphones right here. Get our headphone cable right there and plug it in. And I'm ready to go. Yeah, Dave, you know, put that keyboard part, it's gonna be high, I'm telling you. Yo, hey, what's up? Back again, huh? Well, the back was kinda cool. Pretty simple. MIDI cables in, input output, really cool. Of course, our power source. 
Well, now I want to come with the front of the machine. Now, some of these buttons have multiple functions. So you've got to watch for it carefully and also use your manual as we explain it to you. It's very important. Let's check it out. Now, tomorrow, we'll put that part in. Let me hear Yeah. I'm going to turn our ASRX Pro on. As you can see right here, we've got a resampler with effects. We're ready to go. On our front panel, we have our sample input represented by this green and red LED. And we use this section to monitor our sample input levels into our ASRX Pro. Next, we have our volume knob for adjusting the output from our ASRX Pro into our monitoring system or studio mixer. Next, we have our disk global section. See here, we can load, save, or enter into various system parameters of our ASRX Pro. Our load button also can turn all notes off when we happen to be in the MIDI mode. Our save button enables us to save our entire session. If we happen to double tap the save button, in MIDI operations, load can also turn off stuck MIDI notes. Double tapping save enables you to save all songs, sequences, sounds, and various MIDI setups into one file. This file is known as the All Session file. System also allows you to globally set how your ASRX will respond to MIDI information such as external time clocks, MIDI SysX data, etc. Next we have our effects section where we select a particular effect, edit that effect, or bypass the effect. Next we have our pad section where we can choose a particular sound for our pads, edit its playback mode, or customize its sound using the process button. Next we have our track section where we can select a particular sound for a track, edit a particular track, or mute a particular track. You can hit edit to affect a particular mix or effects bus that a track is using. You can use mute to silence a track or you can double tap it to solo a track. Our next two knobs are used in most of the functions that you perform on your ASRX Pro. The left knob enables us to choose a particular sound type for our pad or track as well as access various parameters. The right knob enables us to choose the sound name or a particular value depending on the mode of your ASRX. Our next set of buttons enables us to select a particular track when performing sequence operations. Hitting the left button takes us to the previous track. Hitting the right button takes us to the next track. These two buttons can also be used to change our MIDI channels when performing sequence operations as well. Next, we have our essentials. These are basically the numbers 0 through 9, and they're used for data entry on our ASRX Pro. Next, we have another set of two buttons for exiting or entering particular modes on our ASRX, as well as answering the questions yes and no. Next, we have our sequence section, where we can select a particular sequence edit a particular sequence or process a particular sequence. You can double tap select to create a new sequence. Hitting edit repeatedly enables you to tap out a new tempo for a particular sequence. Double clicking process will undo the last action that you performed on your sequence. Next we have our transport section which enables us to record stop or play when performing sequence operations with our ASRX. Hitting record and stop together enables you to rewind your sequence. Hitting stop and play together 
enables your ASRX to fast forward to its sequence. You can also use record to scoop out particular note data that you don't want in your sequence. Stop can be used to locate within your sequence. Hitting play repeatedly will take you to the top of your sequence. Next we have our resample section. Our resample section consists of our setup button, our send to pads button, and our start and stop button. Setup brings up our sampling window where we can set our threshold for recording a new sample into the ASRX. We use send to pads to assign our sample to our drum pads. Hitting start starts the recording process. Hitting stop stops the recording process. Next, we can use our scratch pad to audition the samples that we've recorded into our ASRX. Next, we have our transpose section where we can transpose the sound of our drum pads. Pressing the left button causes your pitch to go down by one octave. Pressing the right button causes your pitch to go up by one octave. We have 13 drum pads that are touch sensitive, so if I hit the pad soft, it'll give me a soft drum sound. If I hit it harder, the level of the drum will play much louder. Next we have our patch selects. We can use our left patch select. We can use our right patch select. Or we can use both patch selects. Next we have our floppy disk drive for our loading or saving operations. See we can even MIDI our ASRX up with a keyboard or external sequencer and when we receive notes from the other device this particular LED will light up. Now I'm playing a particular sequence that I've done off of my MPC 2000. While it's playing, I can even go through the sounds of the ASRX. In this particular fashion, I'm using the ASRX like a sound module. Last but not least, we have our LCD panel for interacting with our ASRX. Yo, what's up? We got the front. It's time to do what we always do. Sample. That's why they call it the Sample Kings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to use one of our Sample King CDs. We're going to sample a beat in here and get some idea how this, this machine really samples and how great it sounds. I'm going to sample a beat in, get the right levels. But the first thing you got to do always is get the right connections and the right cables to hook up to your ASRX Pro before you start sampling and get the level proper. Here we go. You pop the center for me, man. Yeah, that's all I'm going to use. We'll hit our system MIDI button. And we will turn. We will hit yes. We want to set system preferences. We'll hit yes. We'll go to our auto zero crossing and we'll turn that to on. Yes. Exit. And we'll save that. Okay, before I even start sampling, I want to press setup on my resample section. As you can see here, it says resampling setup. Now I want to set up the input into my ASRX Pro. The first thing I want to do is get a cable plugged in for my CD player. I use one of our CDs. Look one of these Sample King CDs here. Great little beats and loops on here that we sell from our website, SampleKings.com. I'm going to use the CD to sample some sounds into our ASRX Pro. Okay, now turn that on for me, please. I've got an audio input plugged into just one side for right now. Now, right now, I'm just going to a level here on my VU meter, as you can see. 
And now what I'm going to do at this point, I want to make sure I'm going to write input or output. Now here we have record mode. I'm in mono. I can also be in left, or I can be in stereo. But in this case, I'm sampling from the right only. Next, I can set the ASRX Pro to do auto normalize. This means that the ASRX will normalize my sound to its peak maximum loudness, not distortion. I want to use that. So leave that on. Next, I have record time. This is the amount of seconds I want to use for this particular sample. So I'll try 15 seconds for now. I'm going to press setup again. And now I can set my pre-trigger time. This means that the sampler will start sampling just a little bit, actually three milliseconds prior to the sampler starting to sample the sample. This is to make sure we don't miss any first little bit of noise we want to get or sound from that particular sample. I'll press setup again. And now we're here in the trigger mode. Now threshold means that once the sound breaks the barrier of the threshold level, it will start to sample. We can also use note event and this manual, see that? But I prefer to use threshold. I'll press set up one more time in the resample section. And now we have our meter. Now as you can see here, that little house-like is where the threshold level is set up at. I can turn my wheel for the values and move it up and down. Now let's put a sound for our CD. We'll turn the CD on right now. These are beats from the CD I'm actually checking out. So once, see it's no quiet? Then once the sound comes in, you see these bars right there. Well once it passes this little point here, which is the peak point, it starts to sample. That's passing this, which is the threshold level. I want to set this down a little further now. Right about there. I want to let this thing keep running, let the CD keep running here so I can get an idea of how the levels are going to be. Yeah, we're going to get the CD keep running. I want to make sure my levels are just right. So when it pops through there, it automatically samples the sound, and I get the very first hit of what I'm sampling from the CD. See? Okay, now, we'll go to sample setup again. We have an input, and we have the main out. Now, this is important to use the input and main out, because in this sense, I may want to input something from the bus, like an effect, a reverb, or a chorus thing. Let's check that out. Here's the bus right here. See, it says dry. That means there's no input going in. That means dry, a dry sound. I will go here. I can have a little wet reverb. Bigger light reverb. Or oh, I go insert. Hit a reverb there. Now I'm gonna press effects select. Now effects select, you can see I have a large plate there. I can change the value. Whatever I want to do. Let's go to something bigger here. Let's try this out. See the sound change? I can add an effect to the sound I'm sampling into my SRX. Listen to this one. I like that beat. Okay, once you get the right effect you want to use in the sound, you're ready to start sampling. You can pick any effect you want to use when sampling into our ASRX Pro. I want a pretty much a straight up drum loop I want to use in a track. I'm going to go back to setup again. I'll turn my bus insert to dry. And now I have the dry sound going directly into my ASRX without using the effects. And what I want to do next is I guess pretty much make sure I've got my trigger level at the right point. I like that. That's good. That level looks good. Let's sample after this next sample. That's cool. Right here. See what it did right there? 
Now it's normalizing, it's gone. Well now that we've taken a sample, we want to put a sample in any one of our pads. From this pad to that pad, any one of these 13 pads, as you can see. First, we'll exit. Next, we're going to pick the silence kit, which is a already prepared kit in our ASRX, which we use to put our new samples into, as you can see right there. It's called silence. Now, I'll press send to pad. I'll pick the pads I want to send it to. Then I'll press yes. And now, they'll appear there in my user sound bank. page and we can set our glide time from 0 all the way to 127. Now I'll hit my pad and I'll hit my C sharp and I'll also set that time to something arbitrary like 60. Next we have glide mode. As you can see we're at C2 which is our first pad on our ASRX. I'm going to set this to on and I've already set up my C sharp 2 to have glide mode on. Now I'm going to press my plane C2. See it almost has like a little bend to it. That's pretty cool. Now we can vary that amount of bend with our next page, which is glide time. I'm going to put that to a lower number, around 25, and we'll take a look at that. Let's do something really extreme now and put that all the way up to 127. Our sample isn't long enough to go through the entire glide range time, but you get the general idea of what that function does. It's pretty handy for keyboard sounds, especially mono basses. So you can get that kind of Dr. Dre type funk. Next, we have our pitch mode source. And we have different envelopes that we can use, velocities, MIDI keyboard data that's entered into our ASRX through the use of an external keyboard or sequencer. We can make it vary a pitch based on pressure or we could get it from a pitch wheel. So these are advanced features that you can use but are beyond the scope of this particular videotape. We're going to jump ahead a little bit and we're going to go to our filter section of our ASRX. And as you can see we're in our filter mode. See there are two filters built into your ASRX that control the way that the sound is played. This particular filter is a two-pole low-pass. That means it's one on one filter and 
a two pole on the other filter. No filter. There, both filters are double low pass. Your filtering section has a link page. So remember, we said that we have two filters in our ASR. We can make them independent. That means we can use one filter one way and use the other filter another. Or we can link them up. Filter 2 uses the settings of filter 1. That's hot. Also, our filtering section uses what is known as a filter cutoff. So I'm going to hit our pad. As I turn it down, it gets bassier and bassier. I can almost make it growl. You can't even hear it on that one. At least not on camera anyway. But I feel it in the room. So that's what a lot of rap producers do sometimes when they want to get just the bass part of a particular loop. When we send our sound to the pads, it becomes a RAM kit. So, we hit edit, and we want to find our start loop parameter screen. This is the screen that says start loop. Now, Regardless of the length of your sample, you will see 0, 0, 0, 0, 99 percent. See what the ASR X does is find your zero crossings. The sample that we took, we use a threshold recording. Now if you didn't use threshold recording and you manually hit start and recorded say a string sound, you know, one of those type of sounds that's hard to find in the beginning, you generally have to take a little bit more than what you want. So this screen enables you to maybe even bring in the big beginning of your wave sample. I'm going to highlight the first set of zeros. I must first underscore it, and then I can turn my value fill because I'm going to first underscore my first set of zeros and I'll turn my value knob and you see I no longer have the kick drum starting my sample I'm now starting on the snare I can even bring in the end of that particular sound. I'll go to the last set of zeros. And I'll bring that time down to about 43%. See, it cut the end of my waveform off. So you can use this method to get the particular sound that you want for your hip-hop or R&B production. So now that we've seen how we can edit our wave sample, I'm going to put this back to 99%. And I'm going to put the beginning of the wave back to zero. Now I'm back to zero, zero, ninety-nine. Great.
Next, we have our play mode. And we have different ways that we can play our sample. Currently, I have once forward selected. I'll hit the sample bank so you can hear the sound. See, now I have the whole entire sample once again, and it plays once after I hit the pad. I'll change the value to once backwards, and watch what happens. See, there was a slight pause before the sound started because I actually have more time in that sample than I actually have on the sample. That's just known as airspace. I can, of course, edit that out, but I've left it on just for demonstration purposes. We can also loop forward and backwards. Airspace. Now it's playing backwards. Airspace. And backwards again. I'm going to scroll back over to my start loop page. And I'll bring my start to 1. And then I'll bring my loop in to 63%. So I can take some of that air off. Now I'll hit my pad. Now you see now, I've closed the loop. It's still a little rough around the edges, but I can actually go in and even fine tune that until I get a seamless loop. We'll turn the sensor more to 61%. So you can experiment with your wave sample until you get your loop the way that you want it to be. Next I'll pick a keyboard type instrument, go to my tuning shift page, and I will press my pads. See I'm at C2, C sharp 2, D2, D sharp 2, and so on. So as you can see, our pitch table is equal temper. Some of the other pitches that we can do for Pythagorean, just intonation, mean tone, velati, and so on. So I can either go with standard semitone tuning based on 12 notes, like Western music, or I could go into the pads and edit my own pitch table. So now C sharp and C2 have the same tone. If I don't like that, I can change that. To whatever I want it to be. Next, I'll go to the pad volume page and I can change the volumes of my pads. See, C2 is set at zero dB. C sharp 2 is also set at 0 dB. I might want to change that. Next we can take our sample and place them in a stereo field. I'll go to C sharp 2 and as you can see we're in the center. I'll go to my plain C pad and I'm also in the center there. I might want to put that on the left side. So you can tune pads to be in different places of your mix.
You know, it's in my head. I gotta put it together so you can hear what I'm talking about. That sequencing, taking the art form of picking a bass sound, the right keyboard, the right drum, and making the track come alive. Well, look, it's time to sequence it up. Let's get busy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Boom. Well, now it's time to make a sequence. I'm going to press process. And here we have erase all sequences. I want to make sure my memory is totally empty. I'm going to press yes. It says, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'll press yes again. Data being processed, erase complete. Now I can start making a new sequence. I'm going to press select. I want to pretty much get set to use this new drum loop I've already sampled into my ASRX Pro. First, I want to set up certain parameters within the sequence. I'll tap Sequence Edit, and here, it's up in the top actually, I have my tempo, which I believe I want to tap in first to get an idea of what tempo or what the BPMs are of this particular loop. I'll press the loop, then I'll press Tap Tempo. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Every time I tap, I hold down the loop and I tap the tap tempo, the tempo changes. Watch this. See that? That changed. It judges the speed I'm tapping at and gives me the tempo of what that speed is. Okay, I like that. Now, I'll press edit, sequence. Next we have loop playback. This means the sequence will start from the beginning, go to the end, and play back again from the top. I want that. So I can hear my sequence play over and over again, so I can decide what I want to keep and what I don't want to keep. I'll turn the parameter button again. And turn the knob, we have time signature. Now here, I keep it at 4-4, four, because four, the music I'm doing right now is a 4-4 four, four signature. You may want to change if you're going to do like a 3-4, like a waltz. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. It's a waltz tempo. Or some odd beaters like 7-4. That's particularly really good when you're actually doing jazz. Well, in this case, I'm going to loop a beat up. I want to keep it 4-4. Four, four. I just want to make sure I have the region for point equals to on. Just to make sure the region for my select from the point I got it, will play and continuously play within my sequence. To know further about this, read it in your manual. Next, we have the from, region to point on, and the two. That means we're going from the beginning to the end of two, which means it's a two bar sequence we're creating. Next, here I have record quantize. This is very important. You need to know what speed you want to tell the machine you're quantizing at. In this case, that's half notes. See? Half note triple. They're going to be off where it's just not quantizing. Wherever I play the beat is where it will be recorded at. We can go half, half note triplet, quarter, quarter note triplet, eighth, eighth note triplet, sixteen, Six note triplet and 32nd note and 32nd note triplet. In this case, I just want to use a 16th note triplet. I'll turn my parameter again. Edit the click. Here I can press yes. And I can have my click and record and play. That means we will hear the click, whether recording or just play back the sequence. Or I can have the click off. Or I can have it play only in play in the click. And record. I want to use record and play for now, just for demonstration purposes. I'll press yes. Volume's good? I like that. Perfect. Pan, dry or not dry. We can add effects to the click, and we can set the amount of bars to the click. 
Well, I'm ready now to start kind of like recording my sequence and get it going. I want to use my loop. It's already been set up into my drum kit, as you can see here. I call it Silent 02. Well, that's my loop. Now I've got my parameters set for my sequence. Next, I'm going to press record play. Now see what happened there? It gave me a count off. That's what I was doing in my count off. Making sure I have that minus 1.01 to minus 104 is my count off. Then I'll start to record at that point. Let's do it again. Record and play. Two, three, four. Okay, well now I'm ready to put out my sequence. Get the timing right. Now you see it's almost a little off there. I'll press edit. Now the trust metro edit. I'll make sure click on check just make sure. I don't hear the click in the background, so I want to make sure my tempo is right in sync. And also, I want to hear how it sounds without the click. So here, I turn it to off. Okay, that's good. Go back here. Now the metronome's off. I can do a feel thing sometimes. I like that. It's a good tempo for me right there. I feel it's really tight right here at this tempo. Great. I'll press stop. I'm going to go to my next track. My first track here, as you can see, one. I already got my drum loop there. I'm going to press select track. Now I'm going to track two. You can select different kits to use. Turn the knob here in the value. Put a gizmo kit. Turn the value again here. I'm going to try this old school kit. I'll press play. A little count off. This auditioning sound I want to use. I'm going to use that one right there. I'll press record and play. Now I'll press play. Play it back. I don't like that. I want to press undo. I can erase track two. I think I'll do that. Erase track two. I don't want to use that. It says scope within range, within region. I'll select entire track. Press yes. And now that track has been erased, I can do it again. Here we go. I'll press record from the top. Stop and Now, I'll play it back. That's kind of cool. So we recorded something into the sequence. I want to add to the sequence. Well, and I want to keep the drums on the same track. I'll press edit. I'm going to go back here to record. Instead of replace mode, I'm going to go to add mode. I want to add on while in this record mode. So I picked add. That's good. Then I'm going back to here to my sequence again. And now I want to find a. Now, where's that part right there? Okay, I don't like that. I can take that out too. Let's erase that track. Undo. 
Perfect. Yes. What's I undo it right now? Undo perfect. Now, I'm gonna also change this. I have to press play. I may want to change that kit. I'm gonna change it. See? Now I went to heavy. I like that better than I had before. So I'm changing the kit. The drums I previously had got a different drum on top of this. I like that one there better. I'm gonna try that. I like this sound. That's a little sound right there. I'm gonna go to record. Okay, now watch this. Now we got that in sync now. That's kind of really cool there, you see? We got it in sync. It's really gonna be in time with the beat. I've got my track, I've set it up, and I've got a little drum to it. I got a little drum going in the background along with my loop. Well now, I'm gonna start. Well now I wanna select a new track. I go here, I've got a new track, it's empty. I wanna transpose maybe. Let me find the bass line actually. A different bass sound. I'm gonna transpose here. Let's play. So I'm play a bass line with it. I'm gonna do something very simple, just for fun, to show you how it works. I'll press record, play. Two, two, three, four. See, it's in sync right there. See that? to my sequence. I added a bass line. Well, next, I'll press select track. Here we got a piano. Let's try something here. Let's go play a little piano line, too. Let's even practice with it. Again, I don't like that. Undo that. Undo track four. Press yes. And it's done. Well, I'm gonna try something different this time. sequence up, change my keyboards around, undid tracks I didn't want to keep, put a loop in, and I've got something going on. You can keep adding stuff up to track 16. So it's my like synth sound. Let's play along with the track. Okay. That's kind of funky. I like that. Let me try that. I like 
a little funky. See that? You can keep adding stuff to your beat, make your groove go on. This is very simple. What I'm doing right here, this is to help you get started so you can be the man making the tracks. Okay, well, sometimes I'll make a new sequence. Well, I'll press select, and I'm going to talk to make myself a new sequence. And there you go, create new sequence. I'll press yes. I've got a new sequence I can create. go back here to my window, my first track, I'll make it drums. So the tempo, got 120, I like that, 120 is good for me. Back to here. I want to give them all, let me try something else. I want something different. I want more like of a different kit. No, it's a dance kit is what I want to use. I'm going to go down here to my dance kit. I'm going to go down to, if you can see here, the octaves of my octave to go further down on the range of my kit. I'm trying to find a nice kick drum. Here's one right there. Now I'm ready. After going down to my octave transpose to go further down on the actual key range, I find a kick I want to use. That kick is in the dance kit. I'll press record and play. That's cool. Now I'll play that back. I think that's off. I'll go back to edit. I'm going to go to my mode, I'm going to go to replace, next I'm going to go to my quantize mode. Let's get my quantize correct and make sure it's on or off. And the quantize is on, see that? Okay, we're good to go. Now I'll try again, I'll press undo, press yes, undo track one, and I'll try again. record and play, I erased all the track. Now watch this. It's still there, see? I need to go to press record first, then go back over here to record mode. And make sure I go to add now. Now I want to add to this sequence. I want to add a snare drum and other tracks. Good. Now I'm ready. Let's let me start this.
new track. I'm gonna bass that. Let's try this. Something like that. Too high in pitch. Use my octave. I'm gonna go down low. A little low in pitch here. Change the sound here. We'll do something track three, something different. Get a different sound. Sequences I want, I like my sequences. Well, now it's time for us to take the sequences and put them in song form. Like the intro, verse, bridge, pre chorus, chorus. No, give me the pre chorus, put the chorus here, two choruses, another verse, and a, you know what I mean. Take all these parts that we got for sequences and make them into song. From the beginning to the end of the song, there's a bunch of little parts, you know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about. Let's do this. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes you got a sequence, you got a couple of sequence, you want to put a more to song form. Hit process. This is quantize track. I'm going to go right to what it says. At the very end it says create new song. I'll press yes. Now here, in my first step, I have sequence number two. That's good. I like that. Press yes. I have another sequence coming up here. Once you press yes, it gives you the next step. I can change whatever sequence I want to use. I want to use sequence three here. That sounds good. Press yes. I may want to use sequence. Let's see. Sequence one and sequence three. Yes. And I got four. I may want to use sequence four and sequence four. See that? Once you got the sequence together, press yes. We're good to go. And you just press stop. Play. It's building the song. See that? I can press play here, and I'll be able to start my song to play from the top. We've got five different sequences. They go from step one to step five for my sequence. Oh, I had this fat track, kid, and it didn't come out at all. Hey, plus you 
much you want to load the data. So look, you want to save, you want to load. You want to save it, you want to load it back up. Let's check this out. Yeah, you still put I just, oh, I get enough today. Okay, now that we do the song, we want to save everything. I'll hit my disk location, access disk utilities. I'll hit yes. And then our ASRX will ask me if I want to format the disk. We don't have any material on there, so I'll hit NS. And we'll get a dialog that says erase and format this disk. I'll hit yes. As you can see, our disk is now formatting. Our screen will update indicating that the disk is finished. And say format successful. At this point, format more disk if you want. I'll hit my disk global section button mark save. And we can choose our save device. In this case, it's a floppy. I'm going to hit yes. And I can save all sessions. And I can even name that. We'll call it skin. Aside from letters, I can also put numbers. I call that skins one, and I will hit yes. So it's confirming my disk directories and looking for a spot to save our data. And as you can see, it saves all of the data that's related to our project. I'm going to hit exit. When I go back into save, I'll hit my disk global section button mark saved. And you see, I have the option of saving a single sound, my system setup, my essentials. all sounds I could choose one sequence or I could do all sequences or I could do all session which as you see here I've named SK demo I'm gonna hit yes and if I have files on disk already my ASRX will overwrite those files. I'll just hit yes. It'll erase the old files on my disk. It'll ask me do I want to overwrite the reusable AIF files. I'll put yes. And as you can see, it's saving SSX, MFB, SBX, all kind of different files. And here, of course, are our AIFs. See, now it says successful, and that's it. About your files. When doing an all sequences type of file, all sequences in RAM get saved to disk as a single file. We can save one sequence. We can even name that sequence. I call that beat club. Once I have my name in my LCD window, I hit yes, and it will save it as a MIDI file. Successfully saved. Next, of course, we have our all sounds save option, where we can save all the sounds in RAM. I can leave the default of sounds, and I'll hit yes, and it will ask me if I want to overwrite all reusable AIF files. I'll hit yes, and it's saving that as sounds SBX. It's probably a good idea that you save your data twice if you're using floppies because sometimes you get a bad batch of floppies and you just want to have a safety copy. What I recommend is after you do a save is hit load, 
select your load device, either zip or floppy, hit yes, and always verify your data. Just reload it. At least if you make two disks, one of them is bound to work. And there we have it, successfully loaded.